Good afternoon. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today for our uh, Veterans Day celebration. That's a day to honor all veterans who have served in the armed forces of the United States of uh, America. And I would ask the Master at Arms, John Roddenbush, to command the presentation of colors. At this time, I would like to uh, invite the VFW Chaplain Chris Blunt to the podium to lead us in a uh, brief prayer. Let us remember before our God today that those who sacrifice during times of war in order that we might have liberty and freedom and security. Veterans both living and dead who fought on land, in the air, and on the water. The men and women in labor and industry who provided the machinery of weapons of war. Eternal God, who alone rules the destinies of nations and who has deemed that men and women should live together in peace, we pray for those who fought a good fight and finished the course on this day, we call to remember, we call to remembrance those who served in far off places and have laid down their arms to march into that land of eternal peace. We call to remembrance all veterans who served in the armed forces of our nation and contribute to the greatness of our national defense. We are indeed grateful for their service and sacrifice. And if it were for not if it were not for the men and women in our factories, their victories would not have been sustained. Keep sacred all their sacrifices in our hearts. Keep holy our course in your sight. 
and kindle within us a flame of selfless, unwavering devotion to duty, that we may never be found wanting in those qualities of spirit and mind which are alone are able to preserve our homes, the peace of our nation, and the tranquility of the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain uh, Blunt. It's time. I would ask the Brockton High School Band, led by Mr. Vincent Macrina, to lead us in the national anthem. Go, God! Freeze it! Go! Oh. Time, I would like to invite World War II veteran and national commander of the Italian American War veterans, George Cataldo, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would like to introduce the Honorable Mayor of the City of Brockton, Mr. Bill Carpenter. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you to all who uh, Brave the chilly temperatures this morning uh, to join us in uh, recognition of our veterans. On behalf of the City of Brockton, I would like to offer our utmost thanks and appreciation to all of those who have served and to those who continue to serve, and that we will, uh, as the holidays approach, uh, keep in our thoughts and prayers not just those serving, uh, but their families uh, back home. On behalf of the governor, I've been asked to present a proclamation today that I will read. Whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas on November 11th, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of Campania by the allied nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars, after four years of conflict. And whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts. And whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country. And whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who serve their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2017 to be Veterans Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly 
in its observance. And that's presented. I'm going to give this to Mr. Cataldo. And right on cue, it's uh, my distinct honor and privilege to welcome to today's ceremonies and to the city of Brockton uh, our United States Congressman. Uh, Congressman Lynch has uh, for long been a champion for the city of Brockton, but also a great advocate on behalf of veterans and has consistently advocated to maintain the services to veterans uh, here at the Brockton VA Medical Campus. Uh, so it's my honor and privilege to present to you United States Congressman Stephen Lynch. Thank you. Oh my God. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor. Thank you for your kind introduction. And uh, let me just say that, uh, as many people know, I'm, I'm a frequent flyer to the Brockton VA. Uh, I serve on an oversight committee that, that really tries to watch after our, our, our veterans. And uh, every time I'm there, Mayor Carpenter is there. And uh, you have a wonderful, wonderful mayor and, and delegation, your state delegation, Senator Brady, and, uh, and all, all of our, our elected officials have just been fantastic on veterans' issues. I never have to worry where, where the Brockton delegation is re with regard to, to veterans. And uh, it's, it's a credit to, to the city that, uh, that when people think of Brockton, they think first and foremost about the care and attention that people in this community have rendered to our, our veterans. I wanted to talk a minute this morning. It's a little bit chillier than we expected. Uh, so I'll, I'll abbreviate my remarks. But I did want to speak about a special group of veterans those who, who never returned. Many people in our country don't realize that we have about 83,000 Americans who fought on behalf of this country overseas who never returned. We have about a thousand, a little less than a thousand, in Vietnam never returned. We have about 5,000 veterans fought in Korea never returned. We know where they are in Korea. They're on the east and west ends of the Chosin Reservoir. But because of diplomatic disputes between us and Kim Jong-un's regime over, the, over his aggressive nuclear policy, he ejected our, our officials from JPAC, the, the Joint POW MIA Accounting Command, from Korea. and, and and interrupted our ability to recover the bodies of our sons and daughters and take them home. And in addition, there's about 77,000 Americans who are buried at sea as a result of the major naval battles in World War II. But we're still trying. I had an opportunity to travel recently with JPAC. Again, it's the, J the Joint POW MIA Accounting Command. We went to Vietnam. We join them in the recovery efforts. We know where certain battles occurred. We talk to villagers, especially the older villagers, who might remember the details of a battle in an effort to bring our sons and daughters home. We went to North Korea, well, we went to the Korean border as far as we could go and spoke to South Korean veterans, older veterans who served in the Korean War to try to ascertain the location of, of our sons and daughters who fought in the Korean War. And then we went to places like Zamboanga, a little island in the Philippines, where some U.S. aircraft had crashed during World War II in an effort to recover the bodies of those, those pilots and crew members. One of the last days that I spent in Vietnam, and we went to Hanoi and met with the Vietnamese command staff. And I'll never forget what they said to me on the last day. They said, you know, Congressman, even though Vietnam and the United States fought a war, there goes my speech, <laughs> the, 
the people of Vietnam have great respect for Americans. And they said, it's not for the reasons you might think. It's not because America is the great military superpower. It's not because the United States is a great economic power on trade. It's because of JPAC. He said it's because of the Joint POW MIA Accounting Command that they have been here 60 years later still for the sole purpose of bringing your sons and daughters home to give them a respectful and decent burial in the homes, in the home communities from which they came. And they said that's a very, that has a very high place in Vietnamese culture. They have a deep and abiding respect for how the deceased are treated. Because the Americans are showing that they don't forget. That's the spirit that unites us all here in Brockton today. We're here to remember. We're here to show that Brockton doesn't forget. That's the type of city that you come from. That's the type of people we are. That not only goes to the past. Brockton has a wonderful and rich history of, of military service. I lost a dear friend a few weeks ago, Red Sullivan. He was a reflection of Brockton. He served in the Korean War, came back here, raised a family, and proceeded to get involved in every single aspect of this city's culture and, and political activity. We called him Mr. Democrat, but this was bipartisan. A wonderful man and a veteran. And that tradition continues today. One of the great things I get to do is to appoint young people from Brockton to the United States Military Academies, Annapolis, West Point, the Air Force Academy, the U.S. Merchant Marine, Mass Maritime. I just want to recognize some of those young people from Brockton that are following in those footsteps. Stephen Walsh, 64 Bassett Road, Brockton High School. His parents are Joanne and James, United States Naval Academy class of 2014. William Plouffe, 51 Highland Terrace, Boston College High, also attended Northeastern University. His parents are Donner and Tom. He's currently attending the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. He'll be part of the class of 2020. Michael Haller, 390 Montella Road, Brockton High School. His parents are Michelle Shanks and Leighton Haller. Recently graduated United States Naval Academy class of 2016. Dan Moriarty, 286 Copeland Street, Brockton High School. Parents are Stacy and Brian. He graduated from the United States Military Academy at West Point, class of 2013. Yves Pierre Louis, 146 St. Clair Road, Brockton High School. His parents are Adeline and Pierre Louis. United States Military Academy at West Point, class of 2012. His wife, Megan, and his daughter, Amaria. So to all the veterans, past and present, and those who aspire to be veterans, thank you for your service. May God bless the city of Brockton. May God bless our veterans, and may God continue to bless these United States of America. Thank you. Congressman Lynch's appearance here today, I, I would also like to accent or point out the fact that uh, this year we're commemorating in the U.S. Uh, 50th anniversary uh, or the 50th uh, um, year, 50 years since uh, our involvement in Vietnam. Uh, 
We have today uh, the privilege of uh, the presence of Mrs. Uh, Holster, whose son, uh, Timothy, uh, gave the ultimate sacrifice in Vietnam. Uh, he was a corporal in the United States Army, and uh, I would just like you to uh, uh, recognize the fact that she's here today, gracing us with her presence, Ms. Holster. At this time, I'd like to invite a Vietnam veteran from VFW Post, Senior Vice Commander Robert Graham, to say a few words. Mayor Carpenter, distinguished guests, members of the Brockton Police and Fire Departments, my fellow VFW <coughs> brothers and sisters, and the city of Brockton. As you just heard, my name is Robert Graham. I am the Senior Vice Commander of Brockton Post VFW Post 1046. I was asked to speak to you today about my service in Vietnam. I was requested to join the military in February of 1968. For your younger folks, I say requested because there's no longer a draft. When I was tested, I had high scores in electronics. Because I was drafted, whoops, there's that word again, I would be in for two years. In order to get into electronics, you had to be in for at least three years. Call me crazy, but I took the three years because I wanted the electronics training. It was a good choice because I worked in the electronics field for 42 years after I got out. To make a long story short, I was trained as a computer repairman. Yes, there was computers in the military in the 60s. <laughs> I went to Vietnam in September of 1969, did my job for 13 months, received two bronze stars, and returned home in October of 1970. My return home is what I want to talk to you about today. Being a computer repairman in a maintenance battalion in Vietnam, I did not see the horrific things that you heard about or saw on TV. <clears throat> what I did see was the treatment that we as Vietnam veterans received when we walked through an airport or on the streets of America in our uniforms doing our military service. Remember, this was at the height of the anti-war protest in the late 60s and early 70s. We were called baby killers. We were spat at, spat on, you name it, we were called it. Please remember, those of us who were drafted, uh oh, not, not a good word, we had no choice. We could not afford to go to Canada and we did not go to jail. So we went into the military. Returning home and after being treated the way we were, I did not want to have anything to do with anything military or its associations. That included being a veteran. I was not angry. I just wanted to move forward and put it all behind me. It took over 35 years before I realized that, hey, wait a minute, I am a veteran. I joined the Brockton VFW and have since worked tirelessly. If I can turn the page. I joined the Brockton VFW and have since worked tirelessly for the veterans and the seniors of our community. If you see me around town, I will always have my Vietnam veterans cap on, one that's made in the United States and not in China. I refuse to let America forget that we too, the Vietnam veterans, served our country, the United States of America. To all the veterans out there, happy Veterans Day. To all the Vietnam veterans out there, welcome home. God bless America, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graham. At this time, uh, we will place a wreath at the uh, base of our flagpole here in recognition of those who uh, 
served not only in Vietnam, but uh, those who did not come home, as uh, the congressman uh, reminded us. Oh my God, colors up! Ready? Hey! Fire! 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 Part arms about face. Please remain standing. The Barkton Firefighters Pipe and Drum will conclude this service with amazing grace.
That concludes today's uh, commemoration of Veterans Day. Thank you for joining us.